we are live ladies and gentlemen welcome to toe the line with me george glinsky delighted today to be joined by mr johnny jones who fights harvey dossett on october the 16th at byb london how are we doing johnny very well yourself very well very well man i mean this is a different setting i've not done many interviews for byb before of course they're coming over to england a really exciting opportunity you're fighting harvey dossett 20 years old i believe one of the youngest bkb fighters of all time so before we get into your career and a little bit of a look at you how are you feeling ahead of this fight um like you say we haven't had the best of camps really um with illnesses and stuff like that but we're fit mm. we're fit and ready to go so it is what it is really like you say we're in the best best shape mentally and physically so, all out of sight. Positive. Very positive. Yeah. You've had a, a long and story damaged career. I wanted to, to talk to you, as this is the first time we're speaking on camera, about your, your journey through combat sports before we go into the particulars of the fight. Um, how did you get into combat sports? What age and, and, and what were you initially doing? I, I assume boxing. Uh, basically, I was 10-year-old um, bothering with the wrong crowd. Um, smoking a 10 year old, um, and then obviously, my mum found me in the boxing gym. I stressed it until I was about 20, um, and then fell back out, out to love with the sport. Then I had a family. Um, my boy then turned eight, he wanted to go to the gym, so I took him to the gym and fell back in love. Wow, so, t- so you fought from 10 to 20 as an amateur, you took 14 years out then, basically. 14 years, similar to Craig Rocky Morgan. You took a, a, yeah. a long stretch out of the gym, you jumped back in and you, you fell back in love. What was it? Did you did you miss it during that time? Obviously, 14 years out, you would have... Obviously, it's drilled into you, isn't it? As a, from a, like I've done boxing now from a young age, so it's drilled into you, really. You're obviously going to miss it. Um, but it was just finding a way to get back into it, you know? With the family, I had my own business for years. Um, got off on a job with a company element surfacing took down and give me a chance to go back to the gym you know so what did you achieve during that time in the amateurs I understand you're a Welsh champion uh, yeah um, I had five Welsh vests um, went on to the British had a bronze and a British gold um, and then obviously just just went then so 14 years you came out, you come back in. There's always that discussion, isn't there? You, at 20 years old, you, you've done... Well, you still got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've done well for yourself, but why did you not, at 20 years old, as you say, coming towards the end of your career, why did you not go into the professionals? Why did you take that long stretch out? Um, Like you say, it's, I don't know. With my mother and father moving about, uh, splitting up, moving about a lot, um, it wasn't so easy to get to gyms, etc. Uh, we're in a stable place at the minute now, so it's actually nice to be able to go back and do a bit, you know. Like you say, I've had five, uh, four fights now since I've come back, um, two BKB, mm-hmm. and I had um, two, uh, one with um, TGO, the gloves are off, mm-hmm. um, boxed on there for the British featherweight title, won that. Mm-hmm. I had one then against Hayden Sharif with gloves on for Welsh Combat Series. Mm-hmm. And then I've had two of BKB loss against um, Martin Rafael with a cut. Mm. And then obviously beat Mark Handley. Mm. Yeah. So why bare knuckle boxing? I mean, it's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a career change for you there. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Like you say, I've done the uh, gloves are off. Um, and when I thought, oh, why not have a go at the professional game, innit? but it's totally different. Like with with the amateur version, you've got eight eight time, eight time over the knuckles with bandage. Yeah. You've got nothing. It's literally bone on bone. And as you can tell, you get splits, you get broken jaws. Mm. But I love it. I couldn't see me putting the gloves back on. Some Some people, some people... Never put the gloves back on. I personally really like the bitch mittens. They're a beautiful coverage for my face, which is nice. But I mean, you you got in there against Martin Rafael, your first BKB fight, and you felt what it was all about. You had you were knocked down initially. It was a, a really good scrap, a tasty scrap. I remember watching him being really disappointed about 
the actual stoppage. But from your perspective, really frustrating, obviously, the, the cut um, just above the, the lip there, finishing the fight. It felt it, it felt frustrating, I assume. Yeah, definitely. You know, nobody likes to go out on a doctor stoppage and I felt like I was just warming into the fight, you know? And you came in against Mark Handley, you get that win. I mean, after that frustration against Martin Rafael, how how good did that feel? Oh, I felt amazing. Like you say, um, it was the 22nd of January that I boxed, uh, that I fought um, Rafael. Mm. Um, two weeks out with a broken jaw and everything, I was straight back in the gym. I wanted to put that right, uh, that wrong right, you know. I wanted a rematch with Rafael, but he went up a weight and I went down a weight, you know. And now you come in in a completely different discipline. I mean, BYB is a, a massive new challenge. The Trigon, there's clinching involved, three-minute rounds. It is almost an entirely foreign dynamic for you. How are you feeling about this new challenge, this this new fighting discipline almost? It's Good, like you say, you know, for, for me, is a different shape ring. It's yeah. exciting for me. Who, who wouldn't want to fight in a different shape ring? You know. Definitely. How how are you gonna? How do you feel that's gonna change your your fighting style? Because obviously, as a as an amateur boxer, it's all about catching them in the corners. You're used to that sort of that four ring, four pillar ring. You're used to cutting it off and using your footwork there, but you haven't really got that in a trigon, have you? Yes, once once you get pushed into that corner, you got to fight your way out. Simple as. You either stay stay in the pocket, which I don't think he's going to have the strength to keep me in the pocket, mm. personally. Mm. So, but we'll see. See what happens on the night. You know, his brain that got one punch will change anything. You know, he's got just as much chance as what I have. Mm. Let's talk about your opponent, Harvey Dossett. He's I want to get this right. A brother-in-law of Ellis Shepherd, a very good. Bare knuckle fight. He's over in in BKFC now. He had a couple of good fights in BKB. A familiar face on the on the British circuit. Twenty years old, very very young. One of the youngest fighters in bare knuckle boxing history. Not just in BKB in the entirety of the platform. I don't know how much you've seen of him. There is there isn't a great deal of footage, but a, a very good and well schooled amateur like yourself. So, what are your expectations coming into this fight? Um, like you said, I don't really know a lot about him. I've seen 42 second clip videos, and that is it. You know, I've seen a couple of a couple of videos with him on the pads. Like every, anybody can look good on the pads, you know. Twenty years old though. That's that's very young. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think that's gonna? Because one of the things that we always speak about in bare knuckle boxing is you get older you get to know yourself. And I think it's really important, that sort of maturity, knowing yourself, knowing how far you can push your body, um, that sort of inside that you can pull out when you're in those deep and dark places. So at 20 years old, I don't know what, as I say, you stopped boxing at 20 years old, but at 20 years old, do you feel like you you had that ability to do this kind of grueling sport? Because it is something that sort of comes later in life for boxers. I would never have ever thought about doing being like a twenty year old. <laughs> yeah. But it, it like you say, it wasn't about then, you know? You know, he didn't have that opportunity. Mm. Definitely. And you're in a an exciting division, sixty six kilograms. It's a new division, minimum weight. We've spoken about this off camera, but vacant belts. Sixty nine kilograms you have Dan Chapman as the world champion. We we don't know when he's coming back. It's a bit of a bit of a strange situation. You've got Craig Rocky Morgan, a man who you've you fought on the show of with the sixty nine kilogram British belt, but there's there's no one holding those sixty six kilogram belts. So no. if you win this fight against Harvey Dossett, you've got to be looking at at those vacant titles. Hundred percent. That's 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 the main goal. We'll have to have a sit down and have a chat to Jim and Joe and and see where we go, you know. 100%. And one of the fights that everyone's been talking about, I know you had a, a few words in the ring, respectful words, but uh, you guys are, are interested in that fight. Callan Harley, he just drew with Patrick Nash, a fight he was he was winning. He got dropped in the in the middle portion of the fight. And unfortunately, that may have put a put an end to that dream fight. But Callan Harley is is someone that has been discussed. Is that is that a contest that you're interested in? 100%. 100%. I'll, like you say, he's... He's the one that really who's, uh, keeps coming up. He's the one who's stepping in the way of my dreams. So if, if it happens, it happens, you know? Definitely. Let's talk about goals before we go into sponsors and thanks. You've mentioned the title there. 
what do you see yourself achieving in, in bare knuckle boxing? Just really to see how far we can go. Like, I'd love to have a British title. I'd love to have a world title. Mm. But, you know, I'm not greedy. If a British title comes and we win that, we'll see. Definitely. Definitely. So sponsors and thanks. There's people that are backing you here. I'm sure there'll be a, a very loud Welsh audience backing you on the night, but you've got a, a very strong backing as well in terms of sponsors. Just list off the people that have, have really supported you through this camp, if you can. Um, you've got my main sponsors, obviously, um, Element Surfacing um, and Exo Supplies, which they are the two sponsors really um, who support me a lot. Then you've got um, a new sponsor then that's just come on board, um, South Wales Scaffolding mm. Solutions. Basically, they've helped out massively with this campaign for me to go up to um, London for BKB. Um, the other day, obviously, to have the meeting with BYB, etc. Um, we got a a lot more then we got Miss Mr. T's who does all my clothing. Um Nally's Barbershop. We got Sven Haas, sports massage therapist who keep my old body running and firing all, all cylinders. We got Carl Svensson then, the owner of the pub um and the gym where we train, um, which has been a great help. You got um J and H Sports, um RJ Driving, C B D Sense Amelia. Um, Carl Yardley personal training plus then we got excellence which sorts out all my dietary, my dietary um, plans um, we got another new sponsor then which is Resin Contractors mm-hmm. so I was forever building sponsorship really <laughs> a popular man we like to we like to see that definitely but listen man um, not long now as I say I think I said in the last interview I thought it was a Saturday but it's a Sunday so it's it's I believe three weeks yesterday so not long until fight night so i won't be there unfortunately but i'll be supporting behind fight tv so the best of luck to you mate and thank you for the interview oh, so you're staying in milton Keynes, you mean i'm staying in milton <laughs> Keynes. <laughs> no worries bro awesome man speak to you soon pleasure thanks george